This is Ray Stokes in the oral history section of the library of the Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine conducting an interview with the distinguished professor who is now retired from the Department of Biological Sciences at North Texas State University, Dr. J.K.G. Silvey, who was the first director of what was to become the NTSU Department of Basic Health Sciences, uh, during which uh, he became actually the Associate Dean. Dr. Silvey, we're delighted to have you with us today here at the Med Ed One, uh, and I understand that through certainly a, a, a regrettable oversight that you hadn't had the opportunity to be here before, and we, we apologize for that because we thought you'd been here several times, and we are delighted to have you here. Uh, we know that between the two institutions, the great schools of North Texas State University and the Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine, we facetiously say they lived in wedlock for a long time before they finally became married back in May 1975, but uh, before they even became uh, living uh, out of wedlock, so to speak, uh, when they were joined together, we know that uh, you were greatly responsible for that particular joining together. And I just thought possibly that you might be in a position to kind of fill me in on a few little missing pieces of things. We know some of the, the overt things that went on in various open meetings and so forth, but possibly there's some things that, that made it all possible, that brought it together, and I know that you certainly are in part responsible. So let's just say, uh, when did you first manifest an interest uh, in any sort of an osteopathic uh, school being related to North Texas State University here in Texas? Uh, Ray, I was invited, I believe in October, to attend the national uh, meeting of AOA in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Dr. Robert Nobles in Denton called me one day and asked me if I'd be interested in going and giving a talk or two to the convention. Well, I was delighted. I had not been to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So uh, I agreed to go, and uh, he told me that uh, I would be at the uh, convention on uh, at uh, for the major meeting, and then they divide up into seminars, and then I would go out with uh, Dr. Zachary, who was also a former student of mine. Mm -hmm. So we went to the meeting, and uh, a ex-roommate of mine from undergraduate days, Dr. John Chapman, was also invited and we enjoyed each other during the whole trip. I met with uh, a number of the uh, officials of AOA while I was in Hawaii. And one afternoon, just before I left the main island, uh, I went down to the bar, the beautiful sight that afternoon, and I sat down by a young fellow who had just finished uh, school in Kansas City. He was telling me about the uh, College of Osteopathic Medicine in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. And I asked him where he was from. Well, he was from Texas. And I says, well, did you have to go to Kansas City to get any training? He says, yes. He says, we don't have a school in Texas. Well, I was sort of amazed. So I talked to him a little bit longer, and then I uh, ran into George Lubo. Mm -hmm. And uh, running into George Lubo is worth going to a convention. I can attest to that. And so we started talking about this and that. And that evening I was invited to a meeting with a number of the individuals. And we talked about it a while and I began to get ideas. Why would a state as big and as wealthy as Texas not be able to train the doctors in osteopathic medicine who are to serve a state as they now must go some other place and then come back to Texas. So when I got back to Denton, I called up uh, President Nolan and asked him, and the first time he answered the telephone, I said, this is Gwen Silly. Would you like a medical school? He says, what do you mean? <laughs> Would you like to have a medical school as part of North Texas? He says, well, sure. I says, are you busy? He says, I'm not too busy. I says, I'll be able to see you. So I went over to see him and I told him my plan. But I says, now before we proceed any further, I think perhaps we ought to talk 
to a lot of people that I know and see what they think of it, and then we will talk to somebody in Fort Worth. He says, all right. So I contacted about 40 of my former students who were either officers in some medical association or in some specialty, gynecologist uh, first because I knew about five rather famous ones in Texas who had gone to our institution. Then I went down to Scott and White where we had about 10 former students and a number of other places and told them what my idea was and all of them confirmed why not? Don't you think the state of Texas should train its own? All of them said yes. Mm -hmm. Then I went back to North Texas early in January and began picking out professors that I thought would be influential and useful. I called the professors together and separately and talked to them and all of them were willing to help teach whether they made any money or not. Some of them did of course later but some of them did not. So with that in mind, we called up. Well, may I interject this question? Would you name some of those? Were like Dr. Ben Harris, was he one? Yes. And, and a Dr. Lott, I've forgotten his first name. I knew those two particularly. Okay. Tad Lott. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, Joe Bass was one of the main ones. He's now gone to another institution. Now, he was there at that time. Fine. Excuse me, but I yeah. just want to get their names on record. Oh, yeah. Fine. Both Gordon Skinner. Right. Yeah, by all means, yeah. Dr. Skinner. Uh, a great many of them. Right. Okay. All of them were very, very useful in the whole program. So we mm -hmm. made a date through the uh, through George Lubel and uh, asked him if he was interested. And he says, well, we'd be glad to talk with you. So President Nolan, Dean Hart, Dr. Lubel, and uh, Abe, what's Abe's last name? Abe Herman, doctor, yeah. or not doctor, but yeah. lawyer, attorney, A.M. Yeah. A. Herman. Yeah. I am Herman, met with us at the Colonial Country Club, and we discussed it. This is on January the 11th, it's noted in our minutes here. Mm -hmm. And uh, they seemed to be interested, and they decided that perhaps it'd be a good idea for us to come over and talk with Dean Hart and see what Dean Hart thought about, it, even though he was at our meeting. Mm -hmm. So Joe Bass, Dr. Bass, Vice President Furry, and I came over and talked with Dean Hart looked over what they had, what we had to offer, looked over their faculty and what faculty we could add to it. Mm -hmm. It made him a proposition. He says, well, we think we can do this for forty-eight or forty-seven thousand dollars, forty-seven or forty-eight thousand dollars, this case may be. And I remember he didn't know whether to agree or not, but when we walked out the door he says, you're sure buying a medical school cheap for forty-seven thousand dollars, even though he was in favor. Right, right. So <clears throat> we made a contract with them in June of 1972, and uh, we were going to teach the first year and a half, actually, although we called it two years on our mm -hmm. campus and the rest mm -hmm. in Fort Worth. We and, were going and, to and, excuse me, the 48,000, I believe it was. The reason I know it was 48,000, if you recall, Dr. Silvey, I was acting business manager in those days, and I had something to do with issuing the check. Mm -hmm. So 48,000 represented, I believe, 1,000 per student. There were 48 students going to be enrolled. Excuse me, go ahead. But uh, later we found out we couldn't do it for that amount of money, but in the meantime, the state <laughs> I remember that too. <laughs> had contributed use right, of money. Right, right, right. So, so we got another forty-seven or forty-eight thousand dollars. Right, forty-eight. Uh, and we made it that right. year. Yeah, right. <laughs> so uh, those are the general ideas and points leading up to uh, the uh, beginning of our association. Now, I think that is the history to that point. Uh-huh. Well, fine. Uh, I appreciate very much getting that information from you, but now we know that we did become part of the North Texas State University system, and we do serve under the same president, under the same uh, uh, board of regents. Uh, but it wasn't, of course, all a bed of roses. There were a few thorns, uh, naturally, in the rose garden. But we have emerged very well, and I think it's benefited both the institutions greatly. But uh, can, you, uh, can you reflect on any particular definite factors that finally led to the present status between NTSU and TCOM? It yes. might not be public information. I think there were a great many. Number one, the greatest force in the whole thing was George Lubel. 
Appreciate your hearing saying that. Oh, he is. He's yeah, the right. greatest force. Uh, second force, I think, behind the whole thing uh, was probably me because George and I got along. Well, we could that, talk, we could I mean, make agreements, absolutely. and then, then George would carry out the <laughs> agreements. I didn't have to do right, that. Right. Uh, President Nolan was very much impressed, and uh, he turned over some of the work to Gus Ferre. And while Gus told him, he says, now look, I don't know anything about a medical school. And he says, well, we have two people that do, Joe Bass, who's taller than one, and Sylvie, mm -hmm. who thinks he has. <laughs> and he says, now, well, now he, you were the pre-med advisor in oh, North yeah. Texas for many years, well, weren't I, you? Well, I had some medical training right, in sure. Michigan years right. ago. Well, at any rate, uh, he told Ferrer, he says, well, I want this school. Whatever it takes to do it, you do it, and you just turn Sylvia loose. Mm -hmm. Well, he did until he came down here, and then he forgot that. Yeah. That is the general thing. Well, there were lots of uh, politics mixed up in it, I'm sure. and. Uh, the representative from this area, uh, I suppose uh, Gibb Smith. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Gibb Lewis. Lewis, Lewis, I mean, right, right. Gibb Lewis was a mm -hmm. great influence in the whole thing. Well, that ties in pretty well with another question. Uh, the things that uh, definite factors had led to the uh, possible, the final uh, arrangement that we now operate under, but. What were some of the, the main barriers or roadblocks that were overcome, or at least circumvented, uh, and there certainly must have been some of those? Well, number one, I think, was that uh, most of the practicing osteopaths wanted all of the uh, classes taught on the campus over here. It couldn't be at that time because you didn't have the room, but as soon as the space become, became available, we turned everything over to Fort Worth, right. which it should have been. Uh, the only other barriers we had, of course, was money, and I don't know of any individuals per se who really uh, fought against it. I don't know of any. I'm sure there were some. Well, I'm I'm not familiar with any myself. No. Uh, the only thing that happened on our campus was that there were faculty members who felt that we would get an appropriation, not separating the two institutions, mm -hmm. and it would be a lump appropriation and the medical school would bleed off all the funds and North Texas wouldn't have any. But uh, as soon as that was learned, I told uh, the president about it, and the president says, oh no. Mm -hmm. And he made the announcement and sent out notices on the campus and says, looky, this has nothing to do with the budget. No of conflict at all. No conflict any place. Yeah. Now those are about the only conflicts I know, financial and perhaps political. Well, can you think of one particular thing or event that was the primary reason or cause, I realize this is a little repetitious maybe, but the primary reason or cause that united the two schools? I'm sure it'd just be a ma matter of you lifting up possibly something that you have already alluded to or stated about. Well, uh, North Texas uh, needed TCOM or Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine they needed some fine university to back them. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, Arlington couldn't. TCU didn't have the money, I'm sure. We felt like that we had it why we'd do what we could and then they'd do the rest. And uh, I've been very happy with it. North Texas has been happy. We have grown in scientific research. We have grown in service to Texas. We have grown in every manner necessary to fulfill the hopes and wishes of the president and the faculty at North Texas State University as well as the Board of Regents. Mm -hmm. I know that your professional involvement, both from the North Texas State side as well as the TCOM side, making the uh, uh, affiliation or the joining together uh, becoming a part of, or making it possible for us to become a part of the great uh, NTSU uh, University. Uh, I, I keep I keep repeating myself. I realize, but I do know that because of your your background uh, in uh, uh, the basic science, uh, health sciences, your background uh, in biology. And the work that you were doing uh, in your own research, I think you had something to do with some sort of water uh, research. Yes. Uh, I know uh, I worked for an organization one time that uh, 
you were able to get a little money from, that was a noble foundation at Ardmore. And I, that's where I first heard of you and your work uh, in an indirect way. In fact, a few years later, I went back to try to get some of my old boss's uh, money uh, to help a TCOM, and he'd already given all he could afford to Dr. Sylvie's op <laughs> operation, so they kept telling me down at NTSU. But seriously, we are delighted to have had the opportunity to uh, uh, discuss some of these pertinent uh, facets of, that made it possible uh, to merge. I, I, I want to say, use the word merge, and that's not the right word by any sense at all, but we, for want of a better expression, I sometimes, sometimes use that term. But a joining together affiliation, uh, it's, it's been rather interesting, and it's been your pleasure and my pleasure to see it develop from its inception. And I, I feel like you do. We're looking forward to the future. I, uh, we are anticipating now MedEd 2 being built, which will be called the Basic Science Building, the building we're now in, of course. MedEd 1 will become the Clinical Science Building, uh, and there will be a number of offices and departments that are here that will be moved over at that time. But uh, again, I, I, I'm, I'm just amazed, uh, Dr. Sylvie, uh, really surprised, uh, because I had heard in the very beginning when we were discussing about uh, this interview that you had never been here, and we thought we might even work out a little luncheon or something down here today. <laughs> and then when I learned uh, some of the departments were having Christmas parties and so forth, and then I heard that you'd been here several times, well, we decided we'd just wait for something else to come up. So forgive me again for not knowing that you hadn't been here before. Dr. Sylvie has requested a copy of this transcript before giving his approval for this taped conversation to be added to the oral history section of the TCOM library. This interview was conducted by Ray Stokes in his office on December the 19th, 1980.